You may have seen that we recently hit 80,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel last week. But additionally, um, I just hit, uh, what is it, 1 million hours of Luke Smith content consumed on YouTube. That's a lot of hours. And uh, 12 million views. I remember last year we hit 6 million views. Uh, and we've already doubled that. Now, of course, in the grand scheme of things, that's like the amount of views that PewDiePie gets in a day. But it's uh, great to see the channel's been, I guess, advancing, especially now that I've been putting out videos. Anyway, in this video, I want to answer some user questions. That's why I have my laptop out here. Um, so I want to answer some user questions, FAQ, that I actually get a lot. And a lot of them are about, some of them are about Linux, but a lot of them are about me, lifestyle, stuff like that. Um, so, anyway, I'll, re I'll read the first one out. First one is actually more of a Linux question. Actually, maybe it's not a Linux question. I'll let you decide. So here's what, this is something I actually get a lot. So I wanted to do an example of this. Do you think the time you've spent learning about all this stuff is actually outweighed by the time you've apparently saved? Not a critique, just a thought. That's a good question because uh, most of the times when I get that, it isn't a thought, it is a critique. Uh, because people will say stuff like, oh, well, who cares about uh, figuring out all, all this stuff about programming or, or scripting or configuring a Linux system? It's just going to save you like two milliseconds and you're, you know, it's totally useless. Like, why, why would you ever do it? Now, that's a good question. Now, first off, there are a couple answers to that. The first thing is when I, let's say I'm learning something about how to shell script or something like that. That is not wasted time in itself because... I am not the kind of person, like that's what I do as a hobby. Like a lot of people will get home and they'll have nothing to do and they just want to brain, brain drain, you know? So they'll play video games or and play video games for hours or they'll watch porn or something. My equivalent is just opening up my scripts folder and optimizing things. And that is a much more, I mean it's not just more edifying, it's honestly more consistently enjoyable than any of that junk. Um, so the way I look at it is I never lose time when I'm learning about something like this. That, that is just what I do as a hobby. It, I'm glad that I have started this habit. Maybe it's a hard habit to form, but I have it and I don't have to worry about time wasting stuff outside of that. So even if it was useless, it still would be no cost. But of course it isn't useless at all. Um, so one thing, I, one implicit thing behind this is a lot of people have the idea, right? Um, oh, you, let's say you spend all this time optimizing a script, right? Uh, well, you might get a couple milliseconds out of that when you run it, but who cares? Well, the important thing is when you're optimi when you're doing something really well, even if it's just if you're being a perfectionist about it, um, you, you it might be an optimization that is trivial in that script, but you are learning things that are generalizable to everything else. So I did a video talking about this. What was it? It was the um, uh, "Are you too smart to learn anything?" I think that was the title of it, uh, where I talked about. You know, people, it's weird because people will have these two separate questions and they don't realize they're the answer to one another. On one side, they'll say, how do I learn about Linux? How do I figure things out? And then on the other side, they will have this sort of concern troll question about why do you care about, uh, you know, optimizing things and, and getting things right and knowing how they work on the command line and stuff like that. Those are the same things. When you actually allow yourself to uh, tinker with how your system works, that is how you learn things. That is exactly how it's done. It is not a waste of time if you optimize a script and you only get a couple milliseconds out of that if you have learned something that is generalizable. And the fact of the matter is, especially if you don't know how a computer works, you are not able to see all the stuff that you will learn if you just give it a chance, okay? So it, you will only be able to see that after you learn it, okay? So I'll just say, learning how to script is not like, you know, if you play a video game, you are only going to learn things within that video game with a, a couple very rare exceptions, okay? You might have some, you might gain a little world knowledge in playing, a, let's say, a historical video game or something like that. Like that. Whereas if you're scripting, you are going to learn stuff, concepts, optimizations, uh, you know, how a system works. You're going to learn a whole lot of stuff all the time. So that is one of those things that is basically never, never ever going to be a bad investment. So that's what I say to people like that. A, it's, it's just a hobby, so it's not wasting my time. B, you're going to learn stuff. And C, I think there was some other C that... Are, oh, yeah, the, the other C is a... The, the other thing is sort of a personal thing. In my life, obviously, even if I was not even learning anything, I have fame and fortune because I have this... You, you know, I do this kind of stuff. So, and that's the same thing with you. I mean, you. I'm not saying you're going to be, become a 
YouTuber or something like that. But there are a lot of ways where you are going to benefit from doing what you're doing that you can't see. Okay, so that's what I recommend. It pays off if you know how to use a computer. It doesn't pay off if you use that time to watch porn and play video games. Okay, that's the difference. All right, that was a long answer to that question, but it's it has to be said. All right. Um, oh, and on one note, this is less of a question. Well, I, I get this a lot. Um, what window manager am I using and what distro am I using? I'm using Artix. Artix is basically just the same thing as Arch Linux, except for it uses Runit instead of Systemd. Uh, I've done videos on Systemd before. I'm not against it. I just happen to use it, and it basically has the, the same experience as using Arch Linux, so it doesn't really make a difference. Um, and what window manager I use, I use DWM. I've used nothing but DWM for the past year. I know that I mentioned uh, trying out BSPWM because I thought it could be sort of an in-between between DWM and i3 because people always want me to do i3 stuff. I don't care about i3. I want people to switch to it. I, I think I want to do videos on it to encourage people to switch to, to uh, DWM. Um, because i3, I just think I'm never going to use it again. I don't find it elegant or, uh, I don't know, expandable in the way that DWM is. I vastly prefer DWM. Maybe I'll explain, what, explain why in a video. Okay, so, uh, other question. What YouTube channels do I watch? Very good question. I basically don't watch YouTube. Um, and especially during the times where I'm making videos, I would probably say that I, I um, produce more video time on YouTube than I consume which is maybe a little weird. Uh, the fact of the matter is, especially tech YouTube channels, I mean, I basically consume none of them. I have them all in my, like, news boat. I, I watch uh, their updates to see, like, what kind of videos they're putting out, but I very rarely watch a, a tech YouTube channel. Uh, I gave a recommendation a couple videos ago about a channel, Brody. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll put a link to his channel. Um, but uh, he has a he, it's a smaller YouTube channel that's focused on stuff very similar to mine I, I, He's a viewer of mine uh, and he puts off so, out some really consistent and good stuff um, But I mean, I, I don't watch that kind of stuff. I'm mostly familiar with you know what he's talking about and things like that um, uh, But you, you might find it enjoyable and there are a, a lot of other channels like that as well But I just don't watch tech YouTube whatsoever. I basically don't watch YouTube in general. If I do watch YouTube, it's for one of two things. And this changes every once in a while. Actually, I will say the last YouTube channel I watched consistently was Vargs, which has been off YouTube for like a year. That is the last YouTube channel I basically watched every video, um, or at least pretty consistently, most of the videos. Um, so the two, two types of videos I do watch on YouTube, one is like tutorials of like gardening and you know farming and propagating crops and stuff like that. I watch a lot of tutorials on that because that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and the other thing I watch is uh, like historical or theological documentaries, usually like Catholic or Orthodox ones. That's just something that I watch uh, like on theology and stuff like that. That so see, sounds a little uh, left field if you don't know where I am, but, but I've only been doing that a couple months. I don't know if I will in the future, I, but uh, that's what I watch on YouTube. Um, but as I said, I don't really watch that much on YouTube, to be honest. Um, oh, and another thing, people ask, like, oh, what do you recommend for uh, people who want to start a YouTube channel? I, I did a video sort of talking about my experience on this maybe a couple months ago. It was like reflections of a minor e-celeb or something like this. But I think I'll give you the biggest takeaway. Um, just try, just don't invest too much time and make it easy and just make it easy for yourself. Um, I actually have a friend, which is a good example. I have a friend, and she wants to start a YouTube channel, and she was just belly aching about this video that she had recorded, and she was like, oh, I got to do all this editing and all this, uh, uh, you know, make it look good and stuff like that. And I was just like, just upload it. People want to see the raw footage. They want to see you. I mean, she made, like, cutesy mistakes and, you know, hiccuped and stuff like that in the video. But, um, you know, my mindset is if you're, if you're trying to get into YouTube, be as real as possible. I still haven't, I haven't made a single cut in this video, and I probably won't make one. Maybe I will, but if I do, there won't be fancy effects, you know. Um, that is definitely my mindset. People really, um, it's a testament to your authenticity if you are willing to upload just whatever. Uh, now, I don't mean whatever, like upload garbage, upload good content, but you don't have to, you don't have to sand off all your corners. I definitely recommend just make it easy for yourself and don't expect to get big. Don't expect to get money. Don't expect anything 
Um, I got extremely lucky. Other channels that have made, gotten big all get extremely lucky. It's not even if you make, there is no labor theory of value in terms of YouTube videos. Um, you might put a lot of work into a video. That doesn't mean it's going to get a lot of views. That is one fact of life. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Let me scroll down. I got to scroll down on my computer here. Um, oh, how do how do I manage my website? Here's how I manage my website. I open up an HTML file in Vim and I edit it. That's how I manage my website. A lot of people, especially nowadays, because you have all these static site generators. I don't do any static site generation. That's I, I don't know a bunch of garbage. The what the way I think of it is uh, well, okay. The most I do is I have a template file that I copy to a new place that has you know all the uh, basic syntax of, uh, you know, the HTML page that I want to put on my website that calls the CSS file and all that kind of stuff. But that's the most, that, that's all I do. Everything else I do manually, I just write it myself in Vim. Uh, and I might have shortcuts to write HTML in Vim. Um, I think that static site generators are a big annoyance, especially, you know, because what they'll do is they're really just markdown front ends for writing HTML. So like you write in Markdown, it converts to HTML, it might do this other stuff, and it's just a bunch of layers of confusion that you either have to be perfect fami perfectly familiar with or you have to know how to debug if you're doing something special. I just don't like it. I just like, I, I like simple websites. If your website is too complicated for you to be able to edit it in HTML, your website is too complicated. You need to slim it down. And that's what my mindset is. Uh, everything I do do that's fancy on my uh, website is just with basic tools. I think I mentioned in a video before, like on, on my main page, uh, uh, where it has like the last five blog entries that's not fancy scripting that's not javascript or any of that garbage it's just a a, a sed command or a grep command and then i take the first five outputs of my blog page and then replace that line just with shell commands you don't need any of the stupid scripts or things like that i don't do anything fancy i don't do any markdown i just write in html that's it i know there are ways of actually uh Having a web server that renders Markdown, I just think it's gimmicky. I, I'm old-fashioned. I like the way it, it's easy. It's easy. Whatever. Um, here's another good question. A lot of people ask me about this. Um, so this is basically how do I live without a job, which I need to put an asterisk on, but uh, I'll read this question out. I was wondering how you manage to make a living from what you do. Feel free to point me to a video if you've already addressed this question. I'm interested in alternatives to the nine to five myself, but I think I need to learn a niche skill that has some demand. I was even considering learning something like computer science uh, from scratch. Okay, so here's, first off, you may know, I actually do have a day job, but my day job is, well, first off, it's I'm salaried and it's, canceled so i'm basically just getting paid because of this corona stuff so i'm basically getting paid to do nothing but yes i do have a job right now although it's totally not necessary for me um i live on the income i have from other places all my salary goes directly from my job job goes directly to my savings account i don't spend any of it um so anyway how do i make money by myself now this is one of the i'm gonna have to be a boomer here okay because, you know, I'm 30 now, and I look back at how I was when I was 20, and, you know, I, I had the same kind of questions, worrying about things. And I'll just tell you this. If you make yourself generally competent in not just one skill, not just, you know, uh, doing computer science, or if you're doing that, make sure you're generally capable, you generally know what you're talking about. If you actually make yourself generally capable, you will realize you, you can do a lot of things for money. Okay, that, that's the first off. Uh, the first thing. So I'm I'm the kind of person now I have the mindset of oh just walk in and give them a firm handshake. That is de I am 100% that kind of person, and I know that's dismissive if you haven't figured life out. But it is just not as hard as you think. If you um, if you can if everything you touch turns to gold, you will be able to find a job. And I think if you're in your younger 20s, if you're in college, if you're a, a teenager, I think you need to focus on improving yourself in terms of giving yourself skills. I can't tell you what those are. I know you're looking for like one or two things for me to absolutely tell you this is gonna make you money, but you have to figure it out yourself. You have to just focus on yourself and focus on improving yourself and it will come, like it will come. And I am, of course, I have YouTube. I didn't expect to have YouTube five years ago, okay? Uh, that is just, and I, I was able to do that because I was sort of ready when the gauntlet fell to me, you know? I picked that up, I ran with it, I got lucky uh, with this one thing in life. I could have gotten lucky with a lot of other things in life instead. Uh, and I did that and it's been a pretty stressful, or stress-free 
uh, thing that's gotten me enough income. No, well, not YouTube itself actually doesn't pay that much, but from other things, and you know, you just. Uh, I don't, you just get at that place where you want to be in a place where your hobbies can make you money. And guess what? Nowadays is the easiest it's ever been because look, I live out in the middle of nowhere. There's my shed and my house is on the other side. I t this, I can make lots of money just putting out videos and doing stuff online. That is not something that you could do, you know, easily 40 years ago. Um, you have it, you can live in a place uh, and not spend that much money and still be connected to the internet and make a lot of money, okay? Um, so it's easy to live without a nine to five job if you're a generally competent person, that's what I say. And yes, when you are young, um, I, my recommendations would just be, uh, you won't be, I, take a job that doesn't take up all your time so you can tinker with the things you need to um, and don't go into debt. Absolutely don't go into debt. If you do go into debt, you need to remember that's going to be a liability that you go with the rest of your life, or at least until you pay that off. It is nice in my situation, uh, because I only, I deliberately chose a public, like, uh, in the state that I went to, I went to, uh, college in Georgia. In Georgia, they have a, uh, scholarship where basically if you go to a junky public school, and you have grades that are fine enough, they'll basically just pay for your education. And I deliberately chose that rather than going to some swanky, expensive private school because debt is a permanent liability, right? Or if you have to go into debt to go into go to school, don't go to school. That's my recommendation. I I am so I'm very happy whenever someone tells me I was thinking about going to college. Then you told me it was a bad idea, and I think I'll, I'm having second thoughts uh, because college is definitely. It, the only reason you should go there is to get some kind of rubber stamp. Don't expect anything from college other than that. A very expensive rubber stamp. Um, so that that's what I would say. And uh, I was going to say something else. Let me think about it. Um, shoot. What is it? Hold on. i got to think for 30 seconds. Okay, I remembered. I had to make a cut in this video, but I, I remembered. Uh, minimize your expenses. In addition to just getting generally competent, you want to live on as little as possible. I don't do budgeting because I just never buy anything. That That is one of the biggest things because I'll tell you, I went to graduate school and in, in graduate school, you have so many of these bratty, incompetent, uh, rich kids who do things like they'll they can't cook for themselves, or they if they do, that's like a meme. Oh, I'm gonna cook tonight, because usually they go out and eat at restaurants two times a day, they spend like 30 bucks on that, they spend, uh, they have terrible habits like coffee or cigarettes or something like that, that's like 10, 20 dollars on that sometimes, and it's insane the amount of money that people spend through, and you need to, I mean, even when I was a teenager, before, but when I was in that state where I was like, how am I gonna, how am I going to figure out what to do? Well, at least I can minimize my expenses. At least I can say, how little can I get away with spending every single month? And it's not an issue of budgeting. I know a lot of people like budgeting, like budgeting, and they find it useful. But I am just like, I am only going to buy something it is if it is the last circumstance. Uh, it, if it's the last thing I have to do, you know what I mean? Um, so that is another recommendation. You just got to do it. You, uh, It's insane how much money... Like, and the thing is, if you are not going, it's in, it's crazy to go out to restaurants all the time, especially if you're alone. That's pathetic. Going to a restaurant alone. If you go to a restaurant, it should be a, an event with friends and stuff like that. Um, but uh, just don't spend money. You don't need to. And every time you spend money, you're relying on someone else to do something you should be able to do. You should be practicing your skills and cooking or, or doing something else or doing basic things for yourself. And uh, that's one of the great things about living in the middle of nowhere. People have this weird idea that uh, you're going to be spending more money somehow. And in fact, sometimes things are actually more expensive, but it makes you more independent. You start buying in bulk. You start planning ahead. You start having a life where you spend so much less money, even if you actually move to a place that weirdly enough, you might be paying more for, which will nearly never happen. All right. So that, that was the last of the questions. I feel like that last one is worth its own video. Maybe I should just do that. But anyway... That's it, and I'll see you guys next time. Congrats to everyone on uh, a million hours viewed, consumed. See you guys next time.